Greetings. Hope you got your neuro coffee in hand. I got mine. Mm. And that is perfect as usual. All right, I got a Q&A question that I was pretty excited about because it's referencing the terminology that we use to describe a lot of the things on my videos. And so I think there's a little bit of confusion in, in regard to those terms that we used to describe position and strategy and such, uh, because many of them are synonymous, but it, it requires a little bit of perspective to understand them. So we're gonna to try to clarify that in this video. And the question comes from Andrew, and Andrew says, one thing that would help me better understand and apply some of the concepts you reference in your videos is aligning more precisely on terminology. Specifically, some of the terms and concepts you frequently use feel synonymous, even though they're not. So what Andrew's talking about are things like an exhalation strategy, compression strategy, and concentric orientation. They're all related and they can be superimposed and therefore they can all occur at the same time under certain circumstances. But in certain contexts, maybe one is more influential or, or we're, we're speaking specifically more about one aspect of it. And so that element stands out a little bit more. And so that's why we need to use a specific terminology. But let's go through these and clarify. So he's got a list of terms that, that he just asked me to clarify. And so let's knock them out one at a time. So his first one is flexion extension. Um, I tend to not use flexion extension all that much other than to describe the traditional planar movements so we can have a conversation because flexion extension really doesn't exist in, in our, our movement capabilities, that it, it was a planar movement to describe an observable movement, but because we only have one plane in which we move, which would be transverse plane, basically, and I even, I even question whether that one exists um, when we talk about space and such, but, but um, those are just traditional movements. Um, flexion obviously is an external rotation movement. Extension is obviously an internal rotation movement. So please keep that in mind as we go through those types of discussions. That's just so we can communicate. Um, it's just like talking in 3D when the, re the real world is in 4D. But again, that's another discussion. We'll, we'll just set that one aside. Um, now we want to start looking at more of the, the, the broad scope or, or global strategies and so when we talk about movement, there's only two strategies available to us, and that would be to expand or to compress. The easiest way to look at this is to look at a worm and how they move through space. So, so a worm is this, this essentially a, just a, a tube full of fluid, and the worm shifts the fluid. It expands on one side, compresses on the other, and it slowly works its way um, through space however it wants to move. And not to be insulting, but you're basically a worm. And so we would move through space in the same way. So from a global perspective, we create expansion or compression that allows us to change our shape and allows us to move through space. So from a broad scope, we either have an expansion strategy or a compressive strategy. Now, if we go one step deeper and we, we're still staying global, we think about, okay, well, how do we influence our ability to expand and compress? And one of those strategies is through breathing. And so as we breathe in, obviously we expand, we create more volume inside the body. And as we exhale, we, we reduce that volume. And so that's one of our primary strategies to create this expansion and compressive strategy. And so we can also say that, well, if we're using inhalation to influence our expansion, then we can we can discuss that element of the strategy. If we're talking about exhalation and compression, then we can talk about that aspect of the strategy. Now, obviously we don't have to move air to create compression and expansion strategies. And so under those circumstances, we might not use the terms inhalation and exhalation. But if breathing is one of the primary drivers, then we wanna include that in the description. So we have expansion and compression, we have inhalation and exhalation, and those are synonymous. And so again, those are the broad scope global strategies. Now, if we think about how breathing influences the position of the entire body. So as I breathe in, it tends to be an external rotation based overall uh, strategy of, of the, the human. As I exhale, it tends to be an internal rotation by a strategy. And so what this does is it changes the, the position and the direction of many of our joints towards internal or external rotation. 
And so in doing so, muscles that surround those joints will pick up either a concentric or an eccentric orientation based on the position of the joint. And so then this is going to allow certain motions to occur and this is going to prevent certain motions from, from occurring. And so that's why we want to use the concentric to eccentric orientation. So we're looking more of a local strategy uh, around a joint or a smaller area of the body. And so we can use the concentric to eccentric orientation as the descriptor. So let me give you a for instance. So if I eccentrically orient the posterior hip, then that's going to allow hip flexion to occur. If I eccentrically orient the posterior hip, chances are I'm going to get a concentric orientation on the opposing side. Now, here's the really cool thing. We can take our global expansion compression strategy that we talked to that, that grossly describes movement and we can move that to the local level when we talk about concentric and the eccentric orientation. So let's use the hip example again. So if I expand the posterior hip, that's eccentric orientation. If I compress the anterior side, that's concentric orientation. So I take this, this global representation of expansion and compression and I can look at that locally because it's going to be the exact same strategy. The universal principle is when nature finds something that works, it repeats itself. And so this is one of those elements. This would, We could use this as a fractal representation of movement where I'm looking at it at a smaller scale at joint level and I'm looking at a macro scale when I'm talking about global movement of the body. And then we want to finally talk about the overcoming and yielding action of, of muscles. And so what we need to understand is that if, I'm, if I have a concentrically oriented muscle, that position of the muscle, so we're taking a snapshot in time, that position of the muscle when I'm concentrically oriented means that it would be shorter than its resting position if it had full excursion from its full extensibility to full compression. And so again, so we could think of that as a, the traditional concentric contraction would be a shortening contraction. What I want you to look at it as is a shortened position relative to its middle, wherever that imagined middle may be. Um, so it's behaving in a shortened position. When we talk about eccentric orientation, we're talking about the opposite. So eccentric actually means away from midline. And so an eccentric orientation would be a muscle that is positioned longer than its imagined middle, wherever it may be, if it has full excursion. And so now I can describe two, two different positions of the muscle, and again, as a, as a snapshot in time, so I can describe um, its length. But now I need to describe what it's trying to do. And so if it is limiting motion, then I would describe that as an overcoming contraction. So that would be a muscle that is attempting to shorten, to limit motion in the opposing direction. So if I use my elbow and, and if I position myself at 90 degrees of, of elbow flexion, and if I brace here, but I'm trying to, to pull this way, that would be an overcoming contraction. And if I am trying to hold position against a resistance that's trying to move me, that will be yielding. So in both circumstances, the arm doesn't have to move, but my intentional strategy is different. So if I was positioned in a lengthened position, that would be an eccentric orientation. And if I was trying to shorten it and was being successful or just attempting to shorten it, that's still an overcoming contraction. If I am moving in that direction, so yielding contractions allow movement to occur. That means it's giving way and allowing motion to occur. That would be a yielding action. And so now we have this, this uh, broad scope understanding of terminology that we have to describe the overall strategy. How does that strategy occur through breathing? Um, how does the, the position affect the orientation of a muscle? And then what action am I trying to produce? And so now you can see that I have an ex expansion compression strategy. I have an inhalation exhalation strategy. I have concentric and eccentric orientation. And then I have overcoming and yielding actions. So hopefully that helps you in, in sort of bringing this to a level of understanding that it becomes useful to you. Um, if you have any questions specifically about any of these terms, please throw them out there. We're gonna use these in context. 
um, in as we progress through videos. And obviously, if you look back through some of the older videos, you're going to see these terms used. So now maybe those are a little bit more meaningful to you. But uh, hopefully that's helpful. And then um, we will keep up with the Q&As and I'll see you later.